Assalamu alaikum halal family, hope you're you guys are having yourself a wonderful day guys We're back with another video, this video is titled Why Indonesia's Economy Matters and It's Expected Growth The video is by Econ and the link is in the description in case you guys wanted to check it out So without further ado, let's get started with this video Here we are with Indonesia's own bullet trains, top speed of 350 Ooh, kilometers per hour 350 kilometers The first wow. in Southeast Asia How in recent decades, Indonesia has captivated global attention as a shining star in Southeast Asia, firmly establishing itself as a highly successful and rapidly industrializing economy, much like its predecessors, the Asian Tigers, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea and Taiwan. Nice. Although Indonesia's economy grew with impressive speed during the 1980s and 1990s, it experienced considerable trouble after the financial crisis of 1997, mm. which led to significant political reforms. Today, Indonesia's economy continues to grow at an average good. rate of 5%, Not bad. positioning it as an upper middle income country and eagerly pursuing its ambition to attain high income status by 2045. Mm. While Indonesia is still a part of the developing world, it has a rich and versatile past in the economic as well as the cultural and political sense. Okay, this resource-rich archipelagic nation is the largest country in Southeast Asia, Ooh. with 270 million people largest spread across country. thousands of islands Southeast that stretch from the Asia. Indian Ocean to the Pacific. It is the world's largest Muslim-majority state, its third biggest democracy and its fourth most populous country, with 52% of its population being young. For many years, this mighty nation remained the world's largest invisible economy, shrouded in obscurity. The last time its economy and politics grabbed the world's attention was during the chaos of the 1990s, hmm. when a crony capitalist system crumbled amidst the Asian financial crisis, wow. marking the end of the 32-year-long dictatorship of Suharto. Hmm. But now it is again in the spotlight with playing a strategic role between America and China. Unlike Tough India game. and other emerging markets, it is adapting to a new world order in which globalization and Western supremacy are in retreat. Beneath the hoods of cutting-edge electric vehicles, EVs, and on apps used by hundreds of millions of customers, Southeast Asia's largest economy is rapidly becoming even more visible. Indonesia is the seventh largest emerging market by GDP wow. at purchasing power parity, so, and it's projected to surpass Germany and Russia by 2024. No way. Its economy Wait, is transforming rapidly. Indonesia a has a young population and is quickly urbanizing. I didn't get a chance to write it because all the tickets were sold out. Between now and 2030, Whoosh. Indonesia is That's expected to see an train. influx of an estimated 90 million additional consumers with significant spending million. power. A source of dynamism is digital services, hmm. which are helping to create a more integrated consumer market. With over 100 million people collectively spending $80 billion a year on everything from e payments wow. to apps for on-demand trucking. This growth in Indonesia's consuming class is stronger than in any economy in the world apart wow. from China and India. One reason the Indonesian economy is gaining attention is that it has more than a fifth of the world's nickel, mm. a vital ingredient to the batteries that power electric vehicles. Wow. The only other country with similarly vast reserves is Australia. Additionally, Indonesia ranks as the world's third largest source of cobalt, wow, another sure. vital input. Nickel and as the West, China and India increase subsidies to attract EV investment at home, Indonesia sees an opportunity. This abundance of essential resources for the global energy transition is expected to drive an economic revival and accelerate further growth. But Indonesia's natural resources are not the only factor that might spur faster growth. Jakarta, the capital, has become one of Southeast Asia's most successful incubators of new technology companies. No way. This, in turn, That's raises cool. hopes as Indonesia's challenging geography, it's a vast archipelago of thousands of islands, yes. can be overcome through digitization. For sure. Indonesia's digital economy ranks first among other ASEAN countries. No way, first. The gross merchandise value, GMV, of the digital economy which represents the value of goods sold through customer-to-customer -customer or e-commerce platforms, mm -hmm. has risen from $41 billion in 2019 to $77 billion in 2022. It Almost is predicted to continue to rise to $130 billion no US dollars in 2025. Wow. This rapid growth of Indonesia's digital economy occurring during a pandemic serves as a testament it's to the crazy. adaptability, hard work and resilience of the Indonesian people as a whole. The sustained increase in the value of our digital economy relies on a few key factors. 
government-led digitalization, the progress of micro, small and medium enterprises, mm. MSMEs, and a thriving startup ecosystem. Wow. As many outsiders assume that Indonesia is a typical Asian manufacturing exporter driven by its growing workforce, or a commodity exporter driven by its rich endowments of natural resources. However, the reality is that it is domestic consumption rather than exports, and mm. services rather than manufacturing or resources, which are propelling growth. In 1990, when Malaysia had similar income levels to Indonesia today, wow. Malaysia's exports as a proportion of its GDP were approximately twice as high as Indonesia's are now. This means that Malaysia relied more on exports for its economic activity compared to Indonesia. Wow. Surprisingly, the resource sector's contribution to the economy has actually declined since 2000, despite booming resource prices. Mining and oil and gas now account for only 9% of Indonesia's nominal GDP, hmm. which is less than advanced economies like Australia, 16%, and Russia, 15%. Indonesia has become More increasingly investing. attractive to foreign investors. Mining. With the youngest population in the region, where 26% of the people are under 15, it boasts oh, a sorry. massive consumer market. 26%. Furthermore, Indonesia has maintained a cautious approach in its diplomacy for a long time. This makes it a good choice for both Chinese and Western investors, capitalizing on its relative lack of global attention. Its strategic location, size and abundant resources position it as a critical player in the rivalry between superpowers. Indonesia has a tradition of not taking sides in global conflicts that goes back to the 1950s. It wants to stay neutral is and is looking neutral. to attract investments from both China and the United States. That's how we this can grow as humans and progress. Into an arena where Chinese and American digital companies and investors engage in direct competition. Don't need more For wars. instance, in the field of batteries, CATL, a major Chinese company, is investing $6 billion Ooh, in a project. Six billion. At the same time, oh, wow. President Jokowi is also trying to attract Tesla to invest in Indonesia. Nice. Since President Joko Widodo or Jokowi was nice. elected in 2014, he has made He's substantial investments in it's infrastructure. A lot of investment for the country. The government has Good built 16 new airports, 18 new ports, 2100 kilometers of toll roads, wow, and 36 so. out of 61 dams have been completed. That's awesome. This made Indonesia more competitive in the global economy. According to the IMD Competitiveness Index, Indonesia's ranking has climbed from 44 to 34, well, making so a 10 point 10. increase, the highest in the world. The highest in the world, isn't man. solely influenced by GDP Ooh, and productivity. Indonesia. It hinges Way on efficient go. infrastructure, strong institutions, and policies that promote sustainable value creation. In 2014, just before Jokowi's first term in office, Indonesia banned the export of unrefined ore. It allowed Indonesia to process raw materials domestically. Mm. It helps to surge foreign investment, nice. especially in metals processing, and force foreign investors to invest in Indonesia. It has provided the most obvious boost to growth in recent years. Smart. The investment extends You're beyond metals home. processing to manufacturing. Create On the more island jobs, of Java, you know? home to half the population, a South Korean battery firm, LG Energy Solution, and Hyundai, a car maker, began building Indonesia's first EV battery cell plant late last year. Nice. The government wants Tesla to follow and has offered the company land for a big factory in central Java. Wow. This raises questions about Indonesia's economic growth, as it is Jakarta. largely centered around Jakarta. The GDP per capita in Indonesia's capital has reached approximately $19,000 per person. However, wow. in central Java, which is relatively close to Jakarta, about 230 kilometers away, the GDP per capita is significantly lower, standing at less than $3,000 sure. per person. Moreover, in more distant and remote islands of Indonesia, the economic conditions are even worse, with mm. lower income levels than in Jakarta or central Java. However, the digital revolution is helping to reduce economic inequality in Indonesia. It's making things better by reducing rules and giving investment rewards. The e-commerce explosion Connecting is letting people, people from many different places take part in the digital economy. You can buy nearly anything through Indonesian e-commerce now. The fastest growing cities are the middle-sized ones with more than nice. 2 million people, except Jakarta. These cities, like Jakarta Medan, Bandung huge. and Surabaya, have had an average yearly growth of 7.5% over the last five years. Jakarta's nice. growth was a bit lower at 6.3%. Hmm. But Jokowi has bigger ambitions. 
Indonesia's economic output has grown by a respectable 5% a year since the Asian financial crisis, well nice. above the global average of 3.6%. Wow. But its expansion has been overshadowed by faster growing economies. China's GDP grew by an average of 8.7% a year, India by 7% and Vietnam's by 6.3%. The president first won election on a pledge to raise the growth rate to 7%. That will not happen. Hmm. So, why is Indonesia stuck with a 5% growth rate? During Suharto, the two decades before the Asian financial crisis in 1997 to 98, Indonesia's average annual economic growth rate was slightly higher than 7%. Wow, that's pretty good. However, it was lower after the crisis, hmm. mostly due to the inability of Indonesia's manufacturing sector to grow as fast as it did before the crisis. Hmm. During Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono's SBY presidency from 2004 to 2014, Indonesia managed to recover from the crisis, primarily benefiting from the mining boom and favorable monetary policies of several developed countries, particularly Oof. the US. Nonetheless, growth did didn't reach 7%, hovering just above 5.5% annually. In 2014, Joko Widodo Jokowi succeeded SBY as the president of Indonesia. His ambition is to bring Indonesia's economic growth back to at least the pre-crisis level of above 7% annually by the nice. end of his presidency. Jokowi and his cabinet implemented various policies to boost the Indonesian economy. They reduced the country's fuel subsidy to increase government spending on infrastructure, aiming to remove the significant bottleneck hindering Indonesia's economic growth. Nice. Furthermore, his government aimed to enhance national economic competitiveness, promote exports and attract more investments. While these efforts awesome. show that Jokowi and his economic team addressed several challenges in the Indonesian economy, they fell short of achieving the 7% growth target. The main problems with the current so growth is diminishing return on investment. A significant portion of Indonesia's existing infrastructure is of poor quality, hmm. and the country lacks essential components such as roads, ports, airports, and power generation resources. Building and maintaining infrastructure are also particularly challenging due to Indonesia's geography and the frequent occurrence of natural disasters like floods, yeah, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. As a result, transportation government has and energy a tough costs job. are high, which discourages foreign investment in the country. Foreign Direct Investment FDI, makes up a relatively small portion of the total investment, averaging 2% wow. of GDP over the past decade. This figure is lower than that of most Asian peers, such as Vietnam with 6.6% of GDP, Malaysia with 3.5% and Thailand with 2.5%. Hmm. Since FDI typically results lowest. in significant productivity improvements and positive impacts on other parts of the economy, this diminishes the overall efficiency of investment. Another issue is the declining manufacturing sector. Indonesia witnessed growth driven by manufacturing from the mid-1980s to mid-1990s. However, mm. since then, it has been on the decline. The lack of substantial why. productivity improvements has been a major factor contributing to the sector's overall performance decline. Studies have also identified other significant causes, including an infrastructure deficit, labor market issues, an uncertain business climate, and mm. a wavering stance on economic reform policies. Among these problems, the productivity output per hour worked by Indonesian people is still low compared to neighboring countries, such Climbing as China, though. Malaysia, and Thailand, and higher than that of India and Vietnam. Malaysia is much higher. Unfortunately, Osola. one of the reasons for low productivity is that the government spends less on development, on mm. capital, education, health, and social assistance. It remains low and has even fallen slightly relative to GDP since 2015, as weak revenue collection has forced the government to contain overall expenditure. Whereas the average emerging economy in Asia invests more than 14% of its GDP on development, Indonesia still only invests about half that amount. Corruption wow. in Indonesia has remained a persistent issue, mm. impacting the government's capacity to operate efficiently and provide public services. It can discourage foreign investments and raise the cost of conducting business. According to the Corruption Perceptions Index, Indonesia ranks considerably higher than China, India, Thailand, Malaysia, and Vietnam. Wow. However, <coughs> Jokowi's pro-growth agenda aims to significantly enhance Indonesia's challenging business environment. Substantial progress has been made, as indicated by the notable improvement in Indonesia's ease of doing business ranking. Nice. Indonesia may still attract scant oh, attention internationally, beautiful. but the outlines of a more visible economy are increasingly clear.
With its substantial nickel deposits, Indomar. Indonesia <laughs> is poised to play a prominent role in the thriving electric vehicle Carter, industry, man. which is still in the early stages of a decades-long expansion. If it succeeds, I'm Indonesia already thinking will of when to go the back. Lives of, a of a billion people and spur on a growth-starved world. It could even alter the global balance of power. That's uh, pretty good, like, you know, with the amount of money that they have, as well as the, the large, vast amount of land, like 18,000 um, islands, as well as the disasters that uh, they talked about, right? That's the tough part of uh, the government to be able to maintain all of it. But alhamdulillah, they're still doing good continuously, 5% um, every year. And then they don't have as well enough uh, foreign investment. So, and uh, one of the issues that he mentioned was bribery, corruption. Uh, so my request for you guys is please, please, please. In Islam, it's also haram to bribe or, or take money, take bribe or give somebody bribe. So if you ever come across it in Indonesia, please don't give bribe. And if you are accepting it, brothers and sisters, please don't do it. Help your country grow. As I want to see, inshallah, Indonesia grow. And that's what's going to bring in more investment. So let's together all take a pledge not to give bribe and also not to take a bribe. So this was really, really good, guys. I enjoyed it. You know, I'm happy to see that Indonesia, mashallah, is doing uh, good. You know, I, I'm thinking about it. Maybe one day, inshallah, I want to come and, and live in Indonesia. So uh, I'd love to see it grow and be developed and do even more, uh, do much uh, better than what it is uh, doing uh, right now. So and uh, I hope that you guys uh, think the same way uh, like me. So let's uh, work together and make Indonesia even greater. All right, guys, take care of yourself and your family. Inshallah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and wassalam.